maybe uh, <coughs> somebody here in the precincts of Birmingham, like a copy of God's Word uh, offered to you quite freely. It's an extract from the Bible entitled John's Gospel, uh, written that you might uh, believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through faith in his name that you might know eternal life. If you'd like to have a copy of God's Word, it's offered to you quite freely and without any cost or any obligation to you. You are to take and do with as you will, but given to you uh, in the trust and the hope that you will read it, digest, uh, meditate upon it, and uh, come to an understanding of exactly who it is that Jesus is and, of course, what he is able, able to do more than able to do, I tell you, for those who believe on his name. If you'd like a copy of God's Word, do please feel free to come and ask for one. Gladly place into your hand. In the Bible, we love to read God's Word to you. Word of God, the book of Psalms. Psalm 1 uh, is the reading for this afternoon. Listen up if you've got a Bible with you. Well, maybe you could open up and follow the reading for yourself. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in the season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly, the way of the ungodly shall perish. What a contrast, my dear friends, between the godly, the righteous, and the ungodly, and the unrighteous. Ungodly, my friends, that is, of course, to be without God, that is to be existing, I don't say living, but that is to say to be existing apart from God. For there is no life apart from God. He is life. He's the author of it. He's the giver of it. And of course, well, his to take away too, not yours or mine or anybody else's. But the ungodly, the ungodly, King David says here in this psalm, he says, the way of the ungodly shall perish. But John 3.16 says that whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For the one that is of being right with God, for the one that is of being godly, for the one that is of being righteous, what does it mean, you might ask, to be ungodly? Well, to be apart from God, to be without God, and to be godless. But it means, my friends, to be, it means to be contrary to God in your nature and contrary to God in your practice as well. Because here's the deal. Here's the deal, my friend. We are every one of us, yourself, myself included, naturally speaking, we come into this world, we are, conceived in sin, says God, we are born in sin, we come into the world shaped in iniquity, in lawlessness, and that's the way that we live, my friends. We live ungodly, we live unrighteous, we're ungodly in our natures, and we're ungodly in our practice, contrary to God every which way. So God has this controversy with you that you are a sinner, 
that you're ungodly, unrighteous, unholy, that you're separated from him by your iniquity. God has a controversy with you. And my friend, an indictment against you because of your ungodliness and of course because of your unbelief which keeps you in your ungodliness. So were you to believe, were you to trust in his son Jesus, well, you would be reconciled to God. And you would be, as the psalmist here, he says, you would prosper in your way instead of perishing in your way. Uh, you, you, would be, you would be one who delights in the, in the law of God. But you do not delight in the law of God. How can you delight in the law of God when you do not delight in God himself? No, the very opposite. The law of God, the commandments of God, they are grievous to you. We say to you, thou shalt have no other gods before, before me, as the commandment says, but you say, no, thank you. I'm very happy with my heathen religion. We say to you, thou shalt not kill, but you continue on uh, to have abortions, and to have abortions uh, uh, done. You continue on killing in spite of the commandment, thou shalt not kill. We say to you, we say to you, thou shalt not covet. We say to you, thou shalt not steal. But you do these things because the commandments are not a delight to you. The very opposite. They're a grief to you. They're grievous to you. They're burdensome to you. Oh, don't tell me about such. I'm quite happy in my sin. I'm quite happy in my ungodly state and condition. And my friends, in that condition, you are perishing. You are perishing. The ungodly, the wicked, that is. The Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You're perishing in your way, my friends, of ungodliness. And one day I tell you to perish everlastingly, eternally, unless that is you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, unless that is you repent of your sin and believe. The Bible tells me, my friends, that the righteous, the righteous are scarcely saved. But if the righteous are scarcely saved, well, where does that put you? You are ungodly, unrighteous, my friends. You haven't got a hope of heaven. And you haven't got a hope, my friends of salvation, of seeing heaven, my friends. Not possible. If, my friends, the, the righteous are scarcely saved, well, there's no hope for the ungodly. There's no hope for the wicked, my friends. There's no hope for those who do not delight in the law of God. There's no hope, my friends, in unrighteousness. Already, my friends, perishing. Your lives are perishing. Can't you see it, my friend? Already, even with the breath of life in you, even now, your lives are perishing. Look at the brokenness in your society. Look at the downgrade in your society. Look, my friends, at the brokenness. Brokenness of mind and brokenness of, of body. There's no prosperity with you at all. You cannot prosper without God. But the righteous, the godly, they prosper in their way. But the ungodly, oh, they perish in their way. The Bible says so, my friend. So where I ask you, in that day when God judges you, where will the ungodly stand? If the righteous are scarcely saved, if they, or if they only just make it, my friend, by the grace and the power of God, well, where will you stand in that day when God judges you for your sins, for your ungodliness and unrighteousness? God doesn't like uh, ungodliness. God doesn't like unrighteousness because he is righteous. That's an attribute of God. Everything about God is righteous. Everything he says is righteous. Everything he does is righteous. He hates unrighteousness. 
He hates the wicked every day, my friend. Where does that put you, I ask you, on the day when God will judge you in your ungodly state and condition? Oh, my friends, get right with God. You'll be dispatched, I tell you, into your own place, just like Judas Iscariot, who apostatized. He was a reprobate. He wasn't a disciple after all. He heard about Jesus. He heard the message of repentance. He was bid to believe, but he did not. Further, he betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ over to his enemy. And what was the end of Judas Iscariot? He ended up, the Bible tells me, he ended up in his own place. What was his own place? Well, the same place as all the reprobate. You see, my friends, you're one or the other. You're either one of God's elect or you're one of the reprobates, the rejects, my friends. If you're not of the elect of God, if you're a reprobate like Judas Iscariot, well, the end of you is in your own place just like him. What was his own place? The damnation of hell. That's the end of apostasy, departure from God. That's the end of ungodliness. That's the end of unrighteousness. Perishing, my friends. Not able to stand before God. How could you stand before a holy and righteous God? My buddy here has just been trying to explain to a man what it actually means to stand before a holy, holy, holy and righteous God. God is other. God is holy. God is separate from sinners. Separate from the ungodly. Separate from the unrighteous separate from the wicked. He's of purer eyes than to behold evil. He will not even look upon you in your ungodly state and condition. And only the gospel, my friend, only the good news about Jesus can save you. So you see, my friend, ungodly, unrighteous, think about it, standing before a holy, and the righteous, ju righteous judge and God. I tell you, my friends, the sight of him will make your bones melt like wax. I tell you, you will tremble. You will not be able to stand in the judgment. No, my friends, you will perish. And you will perish for all eternity unless you get right with God, unless you are justified by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, unless, my friends, you repent and believe the gospel, you have another, no other hope outstanding, my friends, in that day. All the wicked, the ungodly, the way of the ungodly shall perish. So, my friends, how? How will you stand before Jesus? How would you stand before the one who today would be your savior, the one who would not turn you away, the one who would not cast you out if you came to him? He says that he shall in no way cast out any who comes to him. For in that day when he comes again, when he returns, the Bible says, with his holy angels, in flaming fire to take vengeance upon those who know not God, the ungodly, those who don't know God in a covenant of friendship, those who don't know God in a covenant of love, those who don't know God in a covenant of grace. My friends, he's coming to take vengeance upon such ungodly souls, men and women, who never knew God in a covenant of friendship, but remained ungodly, unrighteous, unholy, and separated from God all their lives long, who had no thought for and no care for the gospel of the Son of God. I tell you, when he comes with his holy angels, 
and you stand before him in flaming fire he comes with his holy angels, I tell you, my friends, you will dissolve, dissolve in fear before the mighty, mighty Lord Jesus, the King, who's coming to judge. Unless that is today you repent and believe the gospel, unless that is you get right with God, unless that is you're justified by my gospel, you will not stand in that day. You will not stand in the judgment. You will not stand before a holy God. You will not stand before the holy King Jesus. You will not stand before his holy angels. My friends, you will not enter heaven because there is nothing in heaven that is undefiled. And here you are to a man, to a woman, undefiled, unclean, unclean, unclean. Every man, woman, and child born into this world. Unclean, my friends. Can you bring a clean thing, says God, out of an unclean? No, that's not possible. How can you bring a clean child out of an unclean woman? This too is impossible. You're conceived in sin. You're born in sin. And you come into the world in sin. And I tell you, I must tell you that religion doesn't shift your sin. It doesn't wash you and make you clean. Moses, the prophet, in the Old Testament of the Bible, the Torah, the law of God, he said that without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission, forgiveness, that is, of sin. But God, you see, has provided the necessary blood sacrifice. His own son, the Lamb of God. And unless you're washed in his blood, my friend, you're unclean. You're unclean and you're, even in your religion, you're unclean. Religion doesn't make men and women clean. It doesn't take the filthy lust out of your heart. It doesn't shift the ungodliness, the unrighteousness. You'll perish in your religion, perish in your morality. You'll perish in your good works. You'll perish, my friends, in your ungodly way, unless you're justified by the blood of Jesus, shed on the cross for ungodly sinners. Christ, you see, died for the ungodly. Those who know that they're ungodly. He died for sinners. Those who know that they're sinners. And who come to him and put their trust in him, in his person, and in his blood shed upon the cross for their sin. Only through faith in the Son of God can your ungodliness can your unrighteousness be shifted, my friend? And you brought into the kingdom of God. You brought into the kingdom of God's grace. You brought into a covenant of friendship with God. No longer an enemy of God, but a friend of God. No longer an enmity, no longer at war with your maker. But terms of peace, my friends. Receive, receive, my friends, through trusting, believing in God's appointed Savior, God's appointed Redeemer, and there's only one, and Jesus is his name. Bible tells me, my friends, at the end of this age, which isn't too far away, we're in the last of the last days, don't you know, according to the Bible. It's five minutes to midnight on God's clock. Oh, you think it's only just gone one o'clock. No, my friends, on God's clock, it's five minutes to midnight. And when the end comes, the Bible tells me that this air on which you're standing today is going to be dissolved in fire and fervent heat, my friends. And if the earth is burned up, my friends, well, what will the end of the ungodly be? The unrighteous, 
those who have no delight in the law of God and no delight in God himself, ungodly, separated from God, I tell you, you will be burned up as well in the fires of hell that never, oh never, never, Jesus says, are quenched. You shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous, King David says. Well, you can't stand amongst us now. We would invite you to our church, but you couldn't stand it. You would be bored out your brains. Eh? It would be the last place on earth that you'd want to be, amongst the saints of God, singing psalms of praise to God, reading the Bible, and hearing the law of God preached. We would invite you. You could come and you could sit and listen, but you couldn't endure it. You can't stand in the congregation of the saints now. How do you think you'll stand in the congregation of the saints in heaven? No, my friends, that's not possible. You have to become one of us. You have to enter into the family of God. How so? To as many as received him to them, to them that believed on his name, he gave the right, the authority, the power to become children of God, adopted into the family of God. Then you can, then you can stand, then you can stand in the congregation of the saints, but not until. Oh, my friends, my friends, heaven is a place where nothing, there's no lies. There's no lies in heaven. There's no untruth in heaven. And here you are walking, breathing, talking liars. You believe the lies of evolution. You believe the lies of false religion. You believe the lies of your government. You believe the lies of family members. You believe the lies of your employers. Lies, lies. You believe the lie, and you live out of the lie, but not in heaven. <laughs> There's no lies in heaven. Nothing but truth, pure, unadulterated truth. Nothing, nothing that makes a lie, and nothing that works abomination. It's the Bible. I'm telling you what the Bible says, my friend, concerning the ungodly and the godly. And the contrast, the ungodly will perish in their way. And my friends, the godly, the righteous are those, my friends, who delight in the law of God, in the ways of God, and in God himself. For until you're born again, until you're reborn, my friends, there can be no delight in the things of God. There can be no delight in the truth. There can be no love of the truth. And because you do not and will not receive a love of the truth, God gives you over to strong delusion. The same delusions that you see in your society today, my friends. Delusions abound amongst you. Ah, a deluded society that's becoming more and more insane, I tell you, as the days go by. Insanity rule ah, in government realms, in universities. Your children, you send them to university. Oh, they must, they must go to university. They must have a degree. But they must be taught the lies. They must be taught the insanity that they hear in these places of learning. And they come out of them the other end. Intelligent? No, 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 no. You want your children to be intelligent, the last place you need to send them is to a university. Because your young women will come out thinking that they can change into men. And vice versa. They'll come out of university insane, my friend, because they're taught by mad professors, ungodly, unrighteous, unholy, wicked, who hate the law of God and who hate God himself. 
but they will not t- they will not stand they will not stand in the judgment they'll perish I tell you or God tells you they'll perish in the way my friend burned up with unquenchable fire the Bible says but the way oh the way of the righteous the way of the righteous they are proof of the eternal salvation of God the righteous my friend righteous by faith that is not righteous in themselves righteous by Jesus righteous my friend because they've been justified before God by faith because my friends they have they have owned up to their sin they have seen themselves to be what they are ungodly unholy unrighteous and hearing the gospel hearing the good news even hearing about sin and all the law breaking of humankind they my friends convicted of their sin all oh, my friends because because God in his wonderful amazing astonishing grace has laid hold upon them and given them given them hearts my friends to receive the word of God the engrafted word as the Bible calls it that is able to save their soul and they believe the truth my friend it's a belief of the truth that makes them free and makes them righteous and my friends believing the truth about themselves that they are sinners that they're unrighteous that they're in need of salvation and believing the truth my friends about Jesus about the Son of God appointed and anointed and sent into the world by his father to die on a cross so that they could be forgiven to shed his precious redeeming blood so that they could come to a knowledge of the love and kindness and mercy of God and healing simply my friends I tell you because they're the elect of God chosen of God chosen to hear the gospel and believe the gospel the rest are reprobate the rest are for the fire the rest are to be burned up on unquenchable fire but my friends the elect of God those given to Jesus before the foundation of the world those whom the father draws to the son by the preaching of the gospel they hear the gospel they receive the truth about themselves they they receive the truth about their sin they receive the truth about Jesus and how that he is mighty and able to save and they fly into his arms they fly into his arms Jesus save me you must save me or I die I'll perish save me Jesus that's the righteous my friend and they embrace I tell you they embrace eternal salvation that's what they're promised that's what faith that's what's promised to faith God says to them believe and I'll give you eternal life and they believe God they believe God and they trust in his son and he gives them eternal life and they shall never perish they get eternal salvation oh my friend God knows them for his own God knows God knows his own listen again to what the Bible says for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous God knows who the sheep are you can't pretend to be a sheep or you might try you might go to church and try try and hide yourself amongst the saints of God and pretend you know that you're one of the sheep you can dress like a sheep you know you can look like a sheep and you can baa like a sheep but my friend God knows who the sheep are he chose them he knows he knows my friend he knows who his sheep are he knows who he chose and who he didn't he knows my friends the way of the righteous he knows the way that they take my friends but the ungodly the way of the ungodly shall perish 
he knows them. He knows them for his own. They are mine, says God. They are mine, and I will have them. And I tell you, if you are one of God's sheep, if God has chosen you before the foundation of the world, I tell you, whoever you are, God will have you. Yeah? You might kick and scream. You might rebel today. You might howl and holler. But I tell you, mark my words, God will have you if you are his. If you're not, you'll perish in your ungodly way. But God will have his people, and he will own them. He will own them. The world might disown you. Your family might disown you. Your friends might disown you because you love Jesus. But God knows, God knows his own, and he will not forsake his own. He will not abandon his own. They may persecute you. They may drive you down to the grave. They may imprison you. They may take your life from you. But God will not forsake you. He gives to his own. He gives them eternal life. And he never, never forsakes one of his own. And he knows them. He knows them, I tell you, with delight. He delights in them. Oh, they're not perfect. They're not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Sometimes you look at some of them and you wonder if they are sheep at all. You might think to yourself sometimes that they're goats. But no, my friends, no. In spite of all their imperfections, which you're very quick, very quick, the ungodly, very quick to point out, imperfections, weaknesses abound with us. But God, my friends, knows us. With an absolute delight, he delights in the righteous. He delights in the godly. He delights in those who take delight in his law. They take delight in his son, Jesus, and God takes delight in them. But which are you, I ask you today? Ungodly or godly? Righteous or unrighteous? Elect or reprobate? Which are you? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, lest you be reprobate. If you'll believe, the promise is. If you'll repent and believe the gospel, the promise of God is that you shall be saved. That's the deal, my friends. That's the promise of God and comes to you from the God who cannot lie, does not lie. And the promise is issued. That's what the Bible is, a promise. Believe on my son, Jesus Christ. Take my son. Take my son to be your savior, your Lord, and I will save you. I will give unto you eternal life. I will give you life from the dead. I will change you. I will make you godly. I will make you righteous. I'll change your heart. I'll take the heart of stone out of you and give you a heart of flesh. I'll give you a heart that loves Jesus. I'll give you a heart that loves the law of God. I'll give you a heart that loves godliness and hates ungodliness. Unless, by the grace of God, you obey the call of the gospel, you receive the promise of God to repent and believe the gospel, if you will not believe, if you will not receive the word of God, the engrafted word that's able to save your soul, if you will not receive the promise of God as it is issued and repent and believe the gospel, you will perish in your ungodly way. No doubt about it, my friend. Life and death. We're talking about eternity. 
We're talking about your final destination. We're talking heaven and hell. We're talking about your soul. Your soul. The ungodly persons will perish in their sin because they're ungodly in their nature. Because they're ungodly in their innermost being. And because they're ungodly in their practice. It shows what you are. We know what you are. We hear it coming out of your mouth. Yeah. We hear you talking about your false religion. We hear you talking about your ungodly practices. We hear you talking about your filth. We hear you talking about your debauchery. We know what you are. The mark is already on you. Yeah. We know what you are, ungodly. Your practice proves what you are. What you do, you see, my friend, because you have not received the word of God that's able to save your soul. The ungodly, my friend, done away, lost, I tell you, forever, because they have not been known. They've not been known of him, my friend. Not a question of whether you know him. It's a question of, does he know you? Huh? Not do you know him. Does he know you? Are you one of his? Are you one of his sheep? Are you one of the goats? Are you one of his elect? Are you one of the reprobate? Which are you? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ lest you be reprobate. Which is it, my friend? Which is it? Which are you? No one, no one of him, no one unto him, my friends, as being one of his sheep, one of his children. So, my friends, I urge you today, in your ungodly, staring condition, conceived and born in sin, living and dying in sin, in your thousands, in the city of Birmingham, week after week, thousands, ushered into a lost eternity, ungodly, unholy, unrighteous, perishing for all eternity, because they never never experience a change by the grace and power of God through the power of his gospel, the power of God unto salvation. Oh, they may have been religious, but they find in that day that their religion was of no, no use to them whatsoever before the judgment throne of God. No. No, my friends, they never met with Jesus, and Jesus never met with them. And they perished in the way, as they lived in this world, they perished. And finally, and fully, and utterly, they perished in the judgment of God. It is but one way of escape, and God has provided it for you. And God has caused it to be declared amongst you today. I am the way, says Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. One way, one name, one person who died on a cross shed his blood, endured the wrath of God in himself. Hell, he took hell to himself on that cross. That those who put their trust in him, who truly believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, who truly repent of their sins, turn from their ungodly ways, wicked ways, and turn to Jesus and surrender 
and yield themselves to him in faith and become children of the living God. That's the only way out. The only way of escape. My gospel, my friend, the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believeth. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I tell you, and thou shalt be saved. Repent ye and believe the gospel, says Jesus. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. You hear me, Birmingham? You hear the voice of the Savior calling? Repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, repent ye, and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word and read about these things that's offered to you. The Word of God infallible word of God, the engrafted word able to save your soul, offered to you freely, no cost, no obligation. Like one, come and ask for one. May God bless you, Birmingham. Bless you, I say, and have mercy upon your precious, precious, never. Die in soul.